Hey everyone, how you doing today? We are doing episode two with Matt from the East Coast. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, Mike. Thanks for having me. Hey man, one of the things that I want to talk about with you is this notion of opportunity cost. Yeah. And that's a term that most people never really hear. And if you do hear it, it's kind of translated, I think, incorrectly for today's environment. So let me define it first because it was de- it was one of, it was probably the top two or three terms that I took away from my college education, which includes a master's degree. Mm -hmm. So an opportunity cost is essentially, what is the thing that you can't do because you did something X or Y with your money, right? Because you deployed 10 grand on this, you can't buy that, right? That is what an opportunity cost is kind of from a financial perspective. But what I want to talk about, what I think is even more important than any financial opportunity cost is the opportunity cost of time. Yeah. Nobody is talking about this. Nope. And nobody has figured out the back to the future or the rewind the clock or buy extra time. Time is the only thing you can't get back. So I need people to start thinking about their opportunity cost in time. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that before we go any deeper? Yeah, I mean, you're dead on. You know, time is time is the only thing that you can't make more of. You know, so if you can't make more of it, that makes it a pretty expensive commodity or should, should be expensive commodity. Yeah. You know? no, yeah. And people, people don't realize what I mean by this. So let's give you some four examples. For example, if you're 20 years old, 25, 30, shoot, 55, and you're spending two hours a day on a couch, relaxing, getting your, you know, getting your veg time or your recoup time or whatever you want to tell yourself that bullshit time is, you're not getting it back. Nope. If you haven't done the homework, like I talk about in the course, which is 10 or 20 minutes, because you need it to decompress, you're not getting it back. What could you have done with that? Time? Right. 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 That That's a big deal. And again, how I'm trying to tie this into, we talked about in episode one is people have, you know, income taxes, fixed expenses. They have this discretionary or freedom dollars left. I need people to realize that that, that dollars or anything they've look to deploy with that. That's time. God damn it. You're yeah. not going to get it back. Treat yeah. it preciously. Yeah. I mean, you know, to your point to 10 to 20 minutes, I tell my folks the same thing too. tell them all the same thing. Listen, if you don't have 20 minutes to do this, then don't do it. Fine. Do it. Fine. But don't be surprised when a year from now you're in a worse spot than you are right now. Cause it's true. If you're not going forward, you're rolling backwards. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's the truth. And so if you're not making an investment with your time in something that will give you a return, whether it's value or capital, whatever it is, you have to make that investment. You have to, you know, I always like to say, you know, you and I have that sales background with folks and and working in high tech. And, you know, I would always talk to, you know, the, the VP of marketing. And I would say, here's why I fight for your budget. Mm -hmm. I fight for your budget. Because what marketing's responsibility to do is to go out there and sow as many seeds as they possibly can. Yep. And so for every dollar less than you're sowing, that's that much less of a crop I'm going to have. Yeah. My job is to take care of the crop, nurture the crop, and make sure that when it comes time to harvest, that I'm there alongside my client to harvest the winnings, right? And, the, and to get that harvest. Yeah. If you're not sowing any seed in the ground, you will always have a barren field. And then it just becomes overwrought with the weeds of debt. So you might as well start making the investment in the positive in yourself. And that's not even money. It's time. We're literally telling you time is more valuable than money because in many cases it is. Yeah. Without question. The key element of that second spreadsheet in my financial course that just rolled out is something I'm now calling the financial health score. And it's basically five levels of where you sit, right? Anywhere from being negative, which means you're spending more than you make, like stop digging. But what I want to talk about here is what I call the slippery slope. This is the middle class. This is I'm comfortable. This is, oh, I can get a new credit card. I have, I can do that. Oh, I can get a new car because they'll loan me money. Mm -hmm. Folks, the slippery slope is the most dangerous phase. And it's something that I have slipped on a couple of times in my life. Both have, sure. You get a raise or you change jobs, you get a higher income, you go buy that nicer stuff. Mm -hmm. You have just taken your financial freedom dollars, cut it in half. And yeah, you can still pay the bills, but your monthly nut has just grown and you have to keep doing that. 
That is a recipe. If you continue to do that, that's a recipe for disaster. We need to get comfortable, you know, getting a raise and not changing our lifestyle. You want to become financially free. You know, I tell people all the time, this is a big saying, right? I go to high school seniors and go, can you live on two grand a month? Right. (laughs) All of them say, Oh, yes. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I mean, they have no concept, but it, the, the sure. idea is the same thing. I go, great. If you really can, and you do that for, you know, until you're 25, you could be like me and financially free. Yep. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Right. Let's do it. And then they of course get crazy and go, I want to buy a Ferrari. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> there goes that two grand a month. There goes that two grand, buddy. Let's, <laughs> let's, you know, let's, let's not get it twisted. Sure. But yeah. Uh, I need people to realize that there are going to be on one of these five levels all the time. And the slippery slope is the most dangerous because you, yes. you get comfortable, you stop working, you get lazy, you take that opportunity cost of time and go, you know what? I, this is a phrase I, I admit to saying, and I hate that I've said it. I deserve it. Oh no. Oh. Dude, I deserve that $600 Zania belt. I yeah. deserve those $2,000 freaking handmade shoes. I deserve yeah. that $12,000 suit. No, you yeah. don't. Nope. You can afford it. Yeah. You, you can, can afford, afford it, but-, it, but you don't deserve it. Yeah. Nope. Honest to God, if we all got what we deserved, we all have those bad things that we've done that we wish we hadn't. Yeah. If we all got what we deserve, we'd be in deep trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and thankfully a lot of times, you know, there's that opportunity where you can turn that around and say, you know what, I can change the way I do things and I can do them better. Yeah. I mean, the, what I call it, and, and it's, unfair of me, but so many folks, cause I hire a lot of people in their twenties and, and even thirties, yeah. early thirties. And it's the attitude of entitlement. Yeah. It's yeah. a scary, scary thing. I promise you guys, we've, we've done the work. I didn't end up in the corner office by mistake. Didn't happen by mistake. And I don't own all the property that I own by mistake. It was a concerted effort. It was a specific plan. I worked the plan. Have I had to pivot? Yeah. Heck yeah. We yeah, all do. Absolutely. That's part of the plan. That's part of that's the path, right. baby. That's right. And that's the thing is you got to have the things that show you that a pivot is coming and needed. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of the things that you take into consideration a lot with a lot of the experts that you bring on is it's awesome when a deal comes together and it goes exactly as planned. I have never opened up the wall of any property I've ever redone and it went exactly as I hoped it yeah. would. It just <laughs> never happens. Like we just did one where literally a guy was leaning and he went, he actually slipped and his shoulder went into the wall, oh, went into no. the wall and we pulled away the plaster and we realized that there was no insulation in there. Oh, oops. And I was like, oh, I there sunk. Goes, because there I goes was eight like, grand. <laughs> yeah. There goes thousands of dollars. And the worst part is, is the outside of the house we couldn't, that was a specific kind of siding that we couldn't get. Thank God oh, we checked first. Yeah. So we had to literally gut the inside of the house so we oh. could insulate it properly. Now that did not go according to plan and cost yeah. me like, I think it was all said and done. I think it probably cost me 15,000 oh, bucks wow. yeah. between sheetrock and insulation. Now it's done right. But yeah. listen, you're going to have to pivot. It didn't mean that you did something wrong. Sometimes it does. Yeah, but a lot of times it just means that, hey, this is a situation. You better learn how to pivot and you better have somebody that's gone through that process before, like Mike has, like yeah. I have. Yeah. And we can say, yeah, here's your four options at this point. Exactly. I you love know? that. Yeah. And then the last thing for me really in this section is, is I need people to think about time, not price. Yes. I, we, I mean, again, when I was growing up, it was, you know, it, it cost this. Here's a coupon for that. It was always about the money. I want to try to pivot that. I want to have in, you know, family discussions about time, right? If your kid wants a PlayStation five, is that the latest one? PlayStation five, PS five or whatever it is. I got to be honest. I don't have a, I don't, I don't either, but I mean, I saw it out there as a Christmas yeah, gift for someone. Sure, PlayStation. Whatever. Yeah, sure. 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 Right. <laughs> they want it. And I have no idea what they cost, but right now they cost $500. I have no sure. idea. Sure. What I want, what I want kids to realize, and I want mom and dad to tell them this is, or a single mom or single dad is I want son or daughter, I would love to buy you a PS5, but I want you to realize it doesn't cost dad or mom $500. Right. I want you to realize it costs dad or mom 111 days of work. Oh my God, why does it cost that much? How much? No, son. Well, it's because I pay rent. I have a car payment. We have some insurance. I got to put food in the fridge. I'm making this decision on the PS5 on the Delta. Yep. And for me to buy that for you, I have to work for 111 days. Do you really want it? Yeah. Can I make, can I go even more crazy with that? Yeah, go for it. So 
buying a home. Okay. 500 bucks. What's the deposit on a typical $300,000 home anywhere in the country if you're getting an FHA loan? It's three and a half percent. It means it's about about 10 grand, 10, it's about 10, five. Yeah. Yep. That $500, it's not just what else it might kick down the road. It's the fact that you're living in an apartment paying rent for six more months because it takes that long. You're a hundred bucks extra a month. You're now six months off, or even three months. Is it worth a PS5 to be three months further away yeah. from getting on that property ladder? Absolutely not. It just isn't. It just isn't. Well, you know, I'm going to let them. I, I agree with you, obviously. Sure. But, but I want to have that discussion. Right? If for sure. some reason your kid's a whiz and they're going to make a million dollars playing video games or whatever it is. Sure. Fine. You want to write it off as a business expense? I'm not sure. going to judge. I just want to have the conversation. Sure. You know, Listen, at the end of the day, anybody can choose to do with this information that we're giving them. You can do whatever you want with it. You can just be like, you know what? Matt and Mike might have just be the only two guys that are going to watch this particular video. <laughs> exactly. That's okay. That's okay. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, for you and for me, this isn't going to impact or change our lifestyle one iota. No. I'm willing to put in this time every Tuesday because I want to invest in your watchers yeah. and in your listeners because- the, fi- the American dream is alive and well. It's there for you. You can grab it. All you need is d- blueprint yeah. and your blueprint is great. There's, there's some others that are all right, but I think yours is fantastic. And again, that financial freedom does come from first you start with making sure you have your plan in place and then you can get to that point of four rentals. But all it takes is you got to do your first one. You got to yeah. start with one. Yeah. No one's buying four. Sorry. No, yeah. Not, not day one. That's it. Uh, I, I love this topic. We will get into topic number three, which is, of course, for rentals. Thanks, buddy. Sounds great. Sure.